Good afternoon. Good morning to you if you are on the West Coast or in Hawaii. Uh, I would like to, this is SK Gaush, I would like to welcome you to our web seminar today. The topic is Frequently Misunderstood Seismic Provisions of ASCE 7 2010 edition in particular. We have made a selection of nine topics based primarily or, or exclusively, let us say, on the number of questions we receive uh, on, on, on these topics. So that has been the basis of selection. Uh, we, will, we will take you through uh, uh, the nine topics. So uh, with that, I will start getting into the topic. Uh, first thing, I absolutely wanted to make sure that when you see a section number in the entire slide presentation, you should assume that it is a an ACE 710 section number. When that is the case, we don't mention ACE 710. There is one segment where we go back deliberately to ACE 705 and ACE 705 section numbers are clearly marked as ACE 705 section numbers. Similarly, in the last segment, for a brief while, we go to ACE 716 section numbers. Uh, on, on maybe two, three slides. And there also we have clearly indicated that those are AC 716 section numbers. So if you just see a section number, it is from AC 710, which is really the basis of today's uh, uh, seminar. The first topic of the mind that, that we will tackle today is rigid versus flexible diaphragms. The very first question is why, why do we care? Why are we interested in whether our diaphragm is rigid or flexible? Uh, why is it a topic of interest? And, and that is uh, answered on, on this slide in words. Whatever is stated in words on this slide is shown graphically on the next one, and, and I think the, the graphic explanation is uh, clearer. So, so let us go there. So this is a diaphragm supported on three different shear walls shown in red. And the shear walls are of equal lateral stiffness K. It, it takes the same amount of force, lateral force, to impart one unit of industry displacements to these shear walls. Okay, so the stiffnesses are the same. These are the seismic forces. When I say the seismic forces, these will be in, in seismic design. We start with the code based seismic design. We start with the design base shear V. We distribute it along the height of the structure in the manner described by the code. That gives us forces, lateral forces at every pro level. Uh, those are F, capital F sub I forces at pro level I. Those forces add up to what we call story shears. Okay, I have a subsequent picture where you will see the, the, the story shears. Maybe I should have placed it here. You, you, you are all, I'm sure, familiar with this, the, the, the lateral forces at the floor levels and the story shear. It is the story shear that we are talking about here, basically. And we are assuming that to be uniformly distributed across the width of the building, which is a pretty typical assumption. Uh, anyway, if, if the uh, intensity of this loading if, if it is w unit per length uh, the total load would be total seismic force would be w times l l being the length of the diaphragm 